Since the beginning of time, God has been pursuing mankind. His pursuit is steadfast and unwavering. His love is resolute and unmatched. From the moment of our first breath, we have all been searching for hope. In every human heart, there is a longing for true purpose and meaning. There is a sense that we were meant for more. Our city is filled with people searching for truth, searching for answers. These answers can't be found in quick fixes, self-help books, or our limited ability to understand the meaning of life. Eternity is within us. The kingdom of God isn't a place, it's a people who are pursued by their creator and are found in the midst of their searching. You see, where the pursuit of God and the searching of mankind collide, there is Jesus. The bridge to the one true God, Jesus. The beginning and the end, Jesus. The perfect example of perfect love, Jesus. The one who loves us in spite of our failures, takes our worst and gives us his best, Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life, the one who broke the chains of our sin, the one who has the power to heal and restore, the one who defeated death and rose victorious on the third day, Jesus. No other name is higher, no other name is greater, no other name than the one we celebrate today, Jesus. Lord, grace and peace, grace and peace. I am going to ask you to start inviting and sharing. Um, I believe today is going to be an awesome day. If you will, while we are here, if you would just start this moment with just worshiping your Lord, tell him how good he is, understanding that your praise has a purpose. If I've learned nothing else during this pandemic, I've learned that my praise has to be intentional. And that my praise does have an assignment that when I open my mouth with and without music, praise the Lord to all of you in the comments, um, with or without music, with or without somebody forcing me or coercing me, without having all of the accoutrement of church as we know it, my praise and my worship is on assignment that when I open my mouth, when I begin to bless our God, things start happening. Things start to shift when I say, thank you, Jesus. Things start to shift when I say, Lord, I love you. Things start to shift when I bless his name openly and privately. When I'm in my car and I just throw my hands up and I tell the Lord how much I love him. Something starts to happen for me. Something starts to happen in me. Something starts to happen to me. Will you do that today? Will you just start blessing the Lord? If you've been to several services online, Surely you should be already warmed up for this moment and just say, hallelujah, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Some of y'all don't know that. That's so old school. Oh, all the glory. And all the praise, oh my, oh Lord, we praise your name, your name. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Do you praise his name today? Say, I praise you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your day. We thank you that you are good and you are good all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you because you are good. We bless you because besides you, there is no other God. We thank you that every other God bows in your presence. 
We thank you, Lord, because there is none like you in the earth, out of the earth, around the earth. We thank you that for galaxies beyond and anything that we can see, anything that we cannot see, God, you are greater. You are more powerful. You are stronger. You are God. And we bless you. 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 We thank you for our intentional praise. We thank you that you've given us mouth that we can worship you and honor you. Hallelujah. We thank you that we have been given a mind to worship you and honor you, God. We give you this day. We give you this moment in time. Somebody is hooked up to a ventilator right now. Somebody has just gotten the diagnosis for cancer. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you didn't allow even the cigarettes that some of us have smoked, some of the things that we have done, some of the sexual activity that we've done. You kept us from AIDS. You kept us. We ate sugar like nobody's business, but you kept us from diabetes. Lord God, you kept us. And even with the things that we have had in our body, somebody has a testimony that you healed from cancer. Somebody has a testimony that you have healed and sustained with diabetes. Thank you, God. We didn't go into a, a coma. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. That we didn't lose our limbs. We glory glorify you today. We magnify you. You're so good. You're always mindful of us. Even when we're not mindful of you, even when we walked away from you, even when we haven't made the best decisions, you've still been good to us. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to just say, thank you for being God. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And don't you know that when you thank the Lord, there is more that you will receive to him. Give him thanks for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross and that you would let your blood cover now. I pray that you would stand in my body, that you would think in my mind and speak through my mouth. I am not so smart that you cannot move me completely out of the way. I don't know enough Bible. I don't know enough. I don't have more eloquent speech, God. I need you. I need you. Now speak through me for these few moments in time. I pray that you would touch your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being big God. Now I want you to do something that maybe you haven't done. Scare the people in your house. And I want you to say in your house the biggest praise. I want you to do something right now that your tomorrow will thank you for. Do something right now in this moment with your praise that February will thank you for. When February comes in at you like a mighty Russian flood, today's praise is going to be the thing that lifts up a standard. Will you worship the Lord in the comments? Hallelujah. Yes, Alan. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Mm -hmm. Oh, the glory and all the praise. Oh my Lord, I praise your name. Your name, your name. Oh, Lord, I praise your name is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. They are saved. Oh, oh, Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Give God glory. He is wonderful, 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 wonderful. Are you happy to be here? I want you to do me a favor and just invite one person to be on here. Get somebody in here who needs the word. I won't be here long. It is 206. It is my goal and my objective and my purpose to make sure that I give you the word, not take away from what God wants to say. Um, in this moment, um, but also to do it in a timely fashion. We honor the Lord. I'm just glad to be saved. I really am. I realize that um, it could have been another way. Um, 
and it, it, it could have been another way because I have desires. I, I have things that I want to do, things, places that I want to go, people that I want to see. But I am so grateful that there is something called the Holy Spirit that reels me back in, that God's love is so great for me that he keeps me hidden behind the cross. I'm just glad to be saved. I am so glad for the gift of salvation. And I am so glad that that gift cannot be bought because if it can be bought, it can be sold. I am so grateful that that gift can not be earned because if I earn my way into it, I can earn my way out of it. I am so glad that he just gives me grace every day. I am so grateful for his grace and his mercy. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Morning by morning by morning. Somebody ought to just put it in the comments. New mercy. I got new mercy. Karen, I got new mercy. Angela, I got new mercy. God said it today. He, he woke me up and he refilled my account. There was something that I haven't even done yet. There's a thought that I haven't even thought, but by six o'clock in this evening, I'm going to need grace. By 6.30, I'm going to need mercy. Somebody ought to just say, I'm grateful for it. He's given it to me. I'm so grateful, so grateful for it. So grateful for it. Lord, I'm grateful. Flowing from my heart. Hallelujah. It's gratefulness. It is gratefulness. Um, we honor the Lord and honor uh, Pastor B who is in the comments. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am so grateful for grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I wish somebody would be crazy enough to just holler in your house. I'm grateful. Just go ahead and shatter some, shatter the glass in your house and just say, Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to just be shaking your house. If, if you haven't woken, if somebody's trying to take an afternoon nap, honey, wake your family up with the gratefulness of Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to just holler, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm so grateful. Flowing from my heart. It's a whole lot of gratitude. I wrote books about gratitude, but I tell you, it hit different this year. It could have been me outdoors. No food, no clothes. Hallelujah. I could have been just another number with a tragic end, but God saw fit. He didn't let any of those things be. And every day by his power, he keeps keeping me. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I, I remember hearing old people say, and I know y'all like, girl, get into the word. I will. Don't rush me. I'm going to get there. But I remember the old people saying back in the day, he keeps me from danger seen and unseen. Girl, what you mean danger seen and unseen? Just what I said. There's some stuff that I did not see. There's some stuff that I didn't know. They say that this virus is of the air. I cannot tell you how many times I've walked in a room and I could see dust settling. If the dust can settle, then I don't know how many things have come in close contact, contact with my eyes. I don't know how many things God is keeping me from every single day, but I don't have to put on anything. He just shelters me. He just keeps me. I don't know how many times somebody got mad with somebody else and wanted to shoot them and I just happened not to go that way. I don't know how many drunk drivers have been on the road the same time I've been on the road, but the Lord will say, get off or something will, will push me to, to, to go to one store instead of another store. And it would be the same road. Had I had it gone another way, I could have been in a deadly accident. God is good. He's good. I don't, I don't take it for granted when I pass the hospital when I when you pass St. Luke when you pass St. David when you pass all of these other hospitals when when you go past CHI when whatever you happen to be if you happen to be in Houston if you happen to be in Atlanta if you happen to be in Austin today and you're watching right now wherever you happen to be when you drive by those hospitals and you realize that it could have been another way that you could be in there and COVID ain't the only thing that could happen to us how many know that there are other things that God is just keeping us from from. You've had stress, unmeasurable stress, but God kept you from a stroke. You've had stress and anxiety, but God keeps you from heart attack. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just am so grateful. Y'all, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that he keeps me. He keeps me. He keeps me. And I don't even do all the things that I need to do to be kept. But God is 
faithful. And that's why we can call him Abba, who I'm so excited about today. I am so excited just to be his daughter, just to be connected to him. He loves me. He loves me. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we honor all of you all for being here. Um, I am grateful for what God is doing today. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, my tomorrow is already thanking me for today's praise. My tomorrow is already thanking me for today's worship. God is good. God is good. And I can't wait to tell you the testimonies that are happening right now that God is doing something right now. And while I feel the power and the anointing on me, I want you to just touch yourself wherever you happen to, to hurt. If you've been dealing with mental uh, illnesses of any kind, depression, oppression, if you've been dealing with anxieties, I want you to put your hand on your head while the anointing is here. If you've been dealing with back aches, yes. If you've been dealing with stomach aches, if you have been dealing with uh, high blood pressure, if you've been dealing with diabetes, I want you to put your hand on your body and I want you to say, in this anointing, I am healed. In this anointing, I am delivered. In this anointing, I am set free. And he who the sun sets free right now, you are free indeed. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you right now that you have to do this in order to get that right now in this anointing right now, without the accoutrement of church, as we know it, without cheap church, uh, cheap church cliche and empty rhetoric. I want you to understand that God has visited your house right now, that God has done it for you right now, that God has taken even the things that you cannot, uh, that you don't even count as big. I'm talking about some of you have GERD, some of you have LERD, some of you have poor eyesight and you've been frustrated about it. Let me tell you something. The power of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same God who healed blinded eyes in that day is the same God who will open up your eye and give you 2020 vision. I believe in signs and wonders that follow them that believe. I want you to say it. I believe God. A woman, believe God. Man, believe God. There is nothing impossible for our God to do. There is nothing too hard for our God to do. If you can believe it, if you can have it, God can heal it. If you can put it in your mind that the way I came, I remember old people saying, you won't leave here like you came. By the time you log off, by the time I hit end broadcast, I believe that God is going to do the miraculous in your life. Families are coming together. Your child child will be saved. Your child will be delivered. Your child will be set free. Your husband will come off of alcohol and drugs. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Some of you are facing eviction. Some of you are facing foreclosure, but I declare by the name and the power of Jesus Christ that things are working together. Things are binding together. Let me tell you something. I love to cook. And one of the things that I have loved and learned about cooking is that one thing by itself is all right. But an onion is good, but it's better when it's sauteed. And it's better when you start to add, uh, 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 when you add peppers to it and you begin to add garlic to it and then you add meat to it. And then you put some, some broth in with it. And then you start to move other things around and maybe some kidney beans. Next thing you got to a, a big pot of chili. Why? Because things start to work together for something good. It doesn't look good by itself, but as God begins to pile more things into the pot, it is coming together for your good and for his glory. Hallelujah. All right. I am going to jump into the word because Annie, the way this whole thing is set up for me today, I could just praise God all day. But y'all didn't come here to see me praise the Lord. Y'all didn't, didn't come here for all of that. Y'all just like, give me the word. Let me check this off my to-do list. But I believe I've got one or two sanctified folks who are watching right now who is just want to throw up their hands and say, nah, I came here to bless the Lord. I came to magnify God. I came to give God glory. That's why I'm here. I logged on because I wanted to hear God. I wanted to feel God. I didn't want to feel some emotional razzle dazzle. I didn't want to feel some high, but I wanted to feel the presence of God. And this is it. This is who it is. This is who I am. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't give you nothing special. The wig is all the acrobats I got for you today. This little wig, that's all I got for you. Everything else is all about the anointing. It is all about God. I came to give God glory. I want to talk to you for a few moments. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into it. I want to talk to you from uh for a few moments from the topic. And this, 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 this is this is gonna be good. I want you to invite somebody in your life 
who happens to be playing the blame game. I want you to put that in the comments. I'm going to talk to you for a few moments from the topic, the blame game, the blame game. Um, I have watched over the period of time and even myself included, I'm very careful that as I minister the word of God, that I'm, um, careful to include myself in the equation when I talk about scenarios and situations, that a lot of times um, I have shifted blame on to other people, understanding that there is a difference between casting the blame and shifting blame. Um, a shift of blame is that I recognize or someone recognize that it is my fault. Um, I did this thing. I brought this on uh, myself, but because I don't like the way it feels, because I don't like what it does to me, I have a tendency and we have a tendency uh, uh, to shift it or to move the focus of it off of us and on to someone else. And the Holy Ghost wants me to talk to you today about the blame game. And this is where we will find freedom when we realize that it ain't the devil, it's you. I want somebody to go ahead and put that in the comments. Look, man, it ain't the devil this time. It ain't, it, it ain't the devil. He didn't do it. It is me. I, I did this thing to myself. And in order for me to get what God has for me, in order for me to walk out the rest of, because we're still in January, okay? We've only got about a day or so left. But, but in order for me to get everything that God wants me to have, in order for me to walk in victory, in order for me to walk in health and in healing, I have got to to realize that some stuff is my fault. Some stuff I brought into my own house. Some things that I have done in my life. Now I am dealing with the chickens who have come home to roost. It ain't the devil. It's, it's me. It's me. And I can no longer play the blame game. Let's walk through the word of God. I'm so excited about this. Genesis chapter three, verse eight. I have a few scriptures that I want uh, uh, to, to, to talk to you about today because I believe that by the end of this time with you, I'm already really close to my deadline. We might be over a little bit. At least I gave you a disclaimer. Um, by the time you get to the end of this, you will begin to take responsibility for your process, that you will begin to take responsibility for where you are so that you can now shift and get to where God wants you to be. I want you to say that I'm fat because of me. I, Rachel is Rachel's gain weight because Rachel Rachel likes to eat. My family is destroyed because of some of the things that I've done. Uh, uh, um, I lost my job because I didn't come to work on time. Um, I wasn't a good steward. I'm broke today because I wasn't a good steward over the money that was given to me. My credit is poor because uh, uh, I've maxed out all of my credit cards. It ain't the devil. It is. It's me. Genesis 3.8. And it says, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool or the afternoon breeze of the day. So the man and his wife hid themselves. Everybody say hid themselves. Y'all know I like a church that talks back to me. So just do it in the comments, whether you watch or you watch later. Now or later, I want you to talk back to me. And they hid and kept themselves. Hit it. I want to stop right there because this is such a beautiful or interesting part of the text because it didn't say that they just hid themselves in the moment, but they hid themselves and they stayed right where they were. It was an ongoing process of covering up a mistake. Let's keep going. And kept themselves hidden from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. But the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? As if God didn't know. He said, I heard the sound of you walking in the garden. I didn't see you, but I heard the sound of you walking. I'm going to preach that another day because that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, whole nother. And I feel like those who are in here who know word are getting excited at just a little bit of that. I heard the sound of you walking in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Verse 11 says, God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the fruit from the tree that I commanded you to eat? And the man said, get this, you ready? And the man said, the woman whom you gave me to be with, she gave me fruit 
from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled and deceived me. And I ate from the, from the forbidden tree. I want to back back up to verse 12. So beautiful. And the man said, the woman who you gave me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate it. Stop there. Go to chapter two, verse 16. Chapter two, verse 16 says, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, you ate, you may eat freely, unconditionally of the fruit from every tree of the garden. Verse 17, but this is a conditional word, but only from the tree of knowledge, recognition of good and evil shall you not eat. Otherwise, on that day that you eat from it, you must certainly, you shall most certainly die because of your disobedience. Verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, verse 12, and the man said, verse 12 of chapter one, and the man said, the woman who you gave me to be with gave me the fruit. Verse chapter two, verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, the interesting thing about this text is not the fact that they hid themselves because now we're dealing with the fact that God is walking in the cool of the day and he's coming to check. He's coming to have a conversation with his creation. And when he deals with his first creation, when he deals with man, he doesn't go to Eve first. He goes to the place where he's given the commandment. And he says to him, how do you even know that you're in the place that you are in? How do you even know that the right thing for you to do, what gives you the inclination that you should be hiding at this point? And he said, I hid myself because I was naked, but that wasn't the thing that made me pause reading it. And I read it over and over again. And I've heard it preached. But what was interesting is as I read the parallel between this first chapter and this second chapter, the first thing that comes out of his mouth before he says, I'm sorry, before he tries to fix it, before he even tries to cover his wife is that you gave me this problem. God, you gave me this man. You, you gave me this woman. You gave me these kids. You, you gave me this job. And, and, and now looking at it, it it's coming back to back on me. I asked you for a miracle and now it's backfiring on me. You, you gave me this. You, and, and some things that we, we've gotten from God, we didn't even ask him for. He gave it to us so that it could be a, a, a blessing and so that it could bring life to us, so that it could help us to be fruitful, so that it could help us to multiply. But when it does not pan out the way that we want it to pan out because of something that we have done, because of an error, because of a mistake that we've made, the first thing that we do is we want to blame God. We want to blame someone else. We play the blame game. We we want somebody to be responsible for our mishaps. And I started to read uh, 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 these, these articles in psychology today. I wanted to have a better understanding as to why so many people find it necessary to blame other people for their mistakes, to blame other people for their shortcomings, to blame uh, 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 other people for where they failed in life. And one of the things that I read is that blame is a defense mechanism. It is it is a defense mechanism. It it helps us preserve our sense of pride. It, it keeps us from being embarrassed. And people who shift blame are people who are resting in themselves. I, I was talking to a good friend yesterday and he was saying one thing. He said, the reason why people have issues 
issues with, with blame. And we were just kind of talking this thing through it. And it was very interesting what he said. He said, because people have learned to sit on the throne of their own lives. People have made themselves an altar of their lives and they're sitting on the throne. They are the king. They are the priest of their own world. And when things fall apart, their pride says, let me take the light off of me. Let me pour this over. Had I not grown up in this environment, if I didn't grow up in the projects, if I, if I had both parents in my household, then perhaps my life would be a lot better. But I can tell you name by name, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, people who have come from ugly beginnings, people who have had things happen. They have had the, the, the morally irreprehensible things happen to them. They've been raped and molested. They've had people abuse them, people steal from them, people that have had to sleep in their cars, and yet they have taken responsibility for the things that they can control. And they say, if I want things to happen for me, if I want my life to be better, if I want the light to come into my life, then I will have to deal with me. I've got to, I've got to deal with me. And, and it's so interesting that most studies will deal with, with casting off the blame or throwing it on other people, but they don't really have a lot of study about the shifting of blame because at one point the light was on Adam. At one point the light was on the man. And, and instead of just walking in victory, instead of dealing with God and watching God Abba him, watching God father him, watching that relationship. Instead, he begins to shift the blame. I kept reading on and, 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 and it's, it's, very interesting. There is a writer called Titus uh, Levit, uh, Livus, I believe it is. It says, men are only clever at shifting blame for their from their own shoulders to the shoulders of other people. We throw the weight of our uh, idiosyncratic ways. We throw the weight of our addictions. We throw the weight of our sins and the things that easily beset us on circumstances. I, I cussed him out because he needed it. I told him off because she needed it. I, 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 I did it. I'm an emotional, I'm an emotional eater. I, I ate because I was sad. I, I did this. And then you want to get in the prayer line and ask God to heal things that really the healing comes with you confessing your sin and then God dealing with you. And so then I started to continue to read. And I, I want y'all, if you can, and I'm almost done to this. 228, I promise you, I, wa I wanna move this. Isaiah 40 says, in 28 says, do you not know? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord creator of the ends of the earth does not become tired nor grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives strength to the weary and to them that has no might, he increases power. Even the youth uh, grow weary and tired and the vigorous young men stumble badly. But those who wait upon the Lord, who expect or look for him and hope for him will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise uh, up before God. Listen, like eagles, rising towards the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. As I begin to read this and, and I said, Lord, well, well, what is it? And why is it that people are having issues and are blaming? And the Lord said to me, as I was studying this, he said, I want you to look up everything that I've said about the race, that it's not given to the swift nor the storm. Matter of fact, I want you to read a couple uh, a couple texts in your own time, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, therefore, since we have been surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely to us and let us run with the key word here is endurance. The race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy is set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. Again, I say uh, that 
under the sun that there is neither swift nor the battle that the race, I'm sorry, is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong nor bread to the wise nor riches to the intelligence nor favor to those that with knowledge but time and chance happens to them all. He rules again, 12 and 1, that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who say what? That the race is about endurance. And a lot of us are blaming God because we are looking to win. We are looking, but we are blaming God because we're not in first place. Because we don't understand that the race is not running uh, or meant to run to win the race. We're not, we're not trying to, I'm not trying to come in first. I was reading I was reading an article about marathon runners. And, and, and one of the things that they said is that the first thing in order to be successful, not to win, the successful uh, a marathon runner is one that understands that you have to get out of your head. Pride is the thing that causes you to trip up in the middle of the race. And the race is not about being strong. It's not about being fast. It's about staying in your own lane, taking responsibility for the race, taking care of your body so that you have the ability to endure. A lot of us are frustrated with God because we have tuckered out and we are on the sidelines of life and we're mad about things that have happened, mad at ourselves, mad at our circumstances, mad at everybody, shifting circumstances. It's the pastor's fault. It's somebody else's fault when the reality is that we have not been praying about endurance. We've been praying to win. We want everybody to deem us as being successful. We want everybody to look at us and find us to be a, a, a powerful, a powerful teacher, a powerful preacher. We want everybody to see us with better clothes, a better car. We want everybody to see us as overcomers. But the reality is, is that God says, I just want to see you endure. I just want to see you. The gift is not running to get to the finish line. And the problem is, is that a lot of people run to get there, but they've missed everything along the way. The joy of running the race is learning how to take the air in, marching and magnify or, or, or marking your strides. The success in every good marathon runner is that they realize that it's not about the miles that you run. It's not about beating the clock. It's about enduring to get to the finish line. Have you ever ever watched a race and people are angry with themselves because they're on the sidelines drinking water, got cramps in their legs. They, they don't feel comfortable anymore. They're frustrated with themselves. And why are they frustrated? Just like bodybuilders who get on stage and they're just not making uh, 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 the cut. They, 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 they have somebody that, that beats them out because they didn't realize that it wasn't really about the other person. You can be bigger than another person, but that other person who is smaller might win because they've taken their time to shape and mold their body. The person who has gotten to the end of the race, they got there and they were able to win a prize, not because they beat somebody else out who is now living the rest of their lives in pain and suffering because they got to the end of it. But the one that endures, the one that takes their stride, the one that takes their paces and they realize I'm not going to run this mile in 15 minutes, but if I take 30 minutes to run this mile, I might be able to next uh, 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 take the next mile um, after that. I, I may be in the dark right now, and I'm not going to blame the fact that the sun has gone down. I may be in the dark right now. I'm not, not going to blame anybody else for leaving me by myself. I may not be able to see the road ahead of me, but if I can just put one foot in front of the other, if I can just endure to get to the end, to get to the end, I know. Hallelujah. I know that I will be what God wants me to be. I can't blame God that I'm on the sidelines out of breath and winded because he never gave it to me to be faster. He gave it to me to endure. It is no one's fault but my own. If I enter into the race, if I enter into life, looking at everybody else for what they've done, looking at your husband for all of the infidelity or wife for all of the things that she's done. She, you know, I, I wouldn't have cheated if she did this. I wouldn't have done this if he didn't do this. I need to examine, let a man examine himself. God, show me me. Somebody ought to say that today. God, I, I need to see, I need to see me. 
I, I need to see me, girl, if it wasn't for the devil, honey, the devil, you know what though, but I'm going to pray we bind the devil, honey. I'm broke because of, no, you broke because you don't manage your money. You're late because you don't manage your time. You knew you had to be there at 3.30. You knew what time it was when you left the house and you didn't calculate traffic. It's not the devil. It is you. You didn't run with the purposes of enduring. You just wanted to hurry up and get there to say that you did it, to check it off your list. And it's not the devil. Friend, we have to stop blaming God, blaming the devil, blaming our children, blaming our spouse, blaming our job, blaming the white man, blaming the black man, blaming, blaming. Everybody is shifting the blame and say, you know what? It's me. I didn't get fired because I was black. I got fired because my attitude is bad. I didn't, they didn't pass me up for the promote. And granted, I know that those things exist, but you didn't get passed up because you're black or because you're Hispanic or Latino. You didn't get passed up because of that. You got passed up because you don't come to work on time. You got passed up because you don't do what it takes. You don't stay that extra hour. You don't work that. Your business is not thriving because you don't market yourself. You put something up on social media one time and you expect it. If you build it, they will come. But you have to keep telling them that you're here. And now you're mad at God. He gave me this idea and I'm just waiting for it to manifest. No, no. If you want it to happen, you have to take the responsibility. It's me. It's me, Lord. I did it. I did it. What was Adam's proper, what should have been his proper response? God told him, God told Adam, you can have anything. And then he says, this is bone. Now, mind you, he gave the commandment before he gave him her. The commandment came first. When God stopped speaking, remember the last thing that he told you, because it is the thing that will carry you. And it will also be if you ever sit back and start to rewind and replay the things in your mind for why things have fallen apart over time. There are some people who are married right now to somebody that you should have never married. And guess what? You heard it. You heard it. You knew it. You felt it. There is somebody who is living in a city that they should have never gone to. And you knew it. You felt it. God spoke it before you ever got a truck. And now you're where you are. There are some people who are at jobs and you were so desperate for that opportunity that you didn't wait for the next opportunity. And now it's falling about and you got Adam on you. God, you gave me this job. He like, no, nah, no, nah, I told you like in the last chapter of your life before you got here, before you got the job, before you signed on here, I told you don't eat that tree. I told you, yeah, he looked good. He was fine. Bald head, slick hair, whatever it is. I don't know what y'all like these days. Whatever it is you like, it came to you and you didn't wait. And now what? And now we blame God for the thing that we asked for. And he said in the last chapter of our lives, I don't want you to have that. You can have anything else, but not that. That's not what I want you to have. And now you're hiding from him in the cool of the day. Now we're hiding from God in the breeze of the day. We're hiding. We can hear God walking. And long before we can even experience his presence, we can, we can sense the shift coming. We can sense God moving. We can sense the presence of God and we'll run and recoil because we're like, oh, shoot, he coming to get me. I knew this was wrong. I knew I shouldn't have gone there. I can't tell you the things that I'm dealing with right now because I had a no in my knower, as my mother says. I had a know in my knower that I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have gone there. I shouldn't have let that doctor work on me. I shouldn't have gone. I, I didn't need to do that. I didn't, I, I didn't need it. And I dreamt it. I saw it. I felt it. Some of y'all have had uh, um, read reviews, but you said, I'm going to give them a chance. And then you came home and then you had food poisoning. Something told you not to go to that event, but you just had to be there. Something told you, said, something told me, no, the Holy Ghost told you in the last chapter, don't touch it, don't go. And now you got COVID. It ain't the devil. It's you. I, You know, I've never felt bad for the devil. He's a rascal and he don't need nobody to feel sorry for him. But I tell you what, 
we show blame him for stuff that he like, look, I do, I do my own dirt. I do a whole lot of dirt without your help. <laughs> I, I don't need you to put stuff on me. I mean, I gotta, I mean, I got them racked up. And the reality is, he like, this one, that's you, man. You did that. I didn't even put it in your face. I heard God when he told you, and I'm like, yo, I know her. She's been watching this for a while. I'm not even going to present this opportunity. I, this is just her own desires. This is her own flesh screaming out. And it's you. And it's you. I want you to, to just be honest in the comments today and say, you know what? There are some things that I got to get a hold on in my life. There are some things that I've been, I've been blaming the devil. I've been, I've been on the sidelines of life. And there's this great cloud of witnesses screaming at me saying, hey, hey, stop trying to race to prove a point and run to endure. Run so that you can get to the end. Run so that you can make it. Stop blaming everybody and everything for your shortcomings. Don't let pride eat you out of your destiny. Don't let pride walk you out of the thing that God wants for you. Stop pointing all of these fingers. There's three more pointing back at you. Take responsibility. I believe that this is going to be a magnificent year, but in order for it to be good, we have to start doing some digging and uncovering and unearthing the ugly about ourselves. God, there are some single women out there, single men out there. You're not married. You're not dating because you're rude and you're mean. You're condescending and nasty. But today is a day for things to turn around. There are some opportunities that are waiting for you and your smile will be the thing that will walk you into that door. If you would just be kind, there are people that you are coming in contact with who've been watching you, but you will walk yourself out of something good because of your attitude. It ain't the devil. God says, listen, I've given you these gifts. Your gift is going to make room for you. But guess what closes the door to the room? You, not the devil. When he opens a door, the door is open and no one else can shut it, but you can walk away from it. Your attitude can keep you at a distance between the open door, the open door. The only thing between you and the open door that God has is you, your pride, not your history, not your molestation, not the rape, not the bankruptcy, not the charge offs, not the school debt, not your prison record, not your handicaps. Not your, not, not the fact that you're undereducated or you don't feel like you have enough for the qualifications for whatever opportunity it is. There is nothing keeping you from the open door but you. You stand between the open door. I take responsibility for me. Father, we thank you for this word. I take responsibility for Rachel. There are things that I know you said don't do and I did it because I wanted to. There are things that places that you told me not to go, people that you told me not to connect with. And I don't know who's listening, but I know that I'm not talking about just me, but there are other people too. They're in situations, in contracts, in relationships, in covenants, at jobs, connected to something that you didn't want them to have in the first place. And so now they're mad, they're angry. Some of them, Lord, help them. They have children that they're looking at that they've had from a man that, Mm, if they had to do it over. But Father, I pray that in this moment that they will realize that you take all things and make them work together for the good if they would allow it to work for them. I pray that you would help them to realize that the only thing standing between the open door in themselves or the open door of opportunity in themselves is their pride, their arrogance, their unwillingness to hear. So, Father, I pray that you would open the ear of their heart, that you would open up their understanding, allow them to see you in all things. And we bless you. We glorify you. If there is anyone who is not saved today, I pray that they won't let themselves sit on the side of life anymore. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them the strength that they need to come to you so that they can run this race, God, that they can make it to the end. I pray that they would keep their eyes fixed on you, stay in their own lane. 
I thank you that you would put people in their lives that would help them. God, I pray. Lord, those of us who are battling with pride and arrogance, I pray that you would show us ourselves in the most magnificent way. Let us hear ourselves loud every day. God, I pray. And those things that we have done, mm, the opportunities that we've lost, I pray that you would redeem the time. I thank you that you are pulling things back around so that you can get glory out of us. And we glorify you and we magnify you in Jesus' great name. Forgive us for charging you wrong for those things that we've said, it's your fault, Lord. Surely you could have kept me from this. All the red flags were there. We just didn't hear you. We didn't want to. We wanted what we want, so we persisted so we brilliantly to do what we wanted to do, so forgive us. In Jesus' name, and we thank you. Amen. Listen, God wants us to live a good life. God wants us to live a healthy life. God wants us to live an abundant life. But God wants us to be responsible for our own stuff. God told Adam in the first chapter of his life, God told him what he could have and what he couldn't have. And Adam, when he had an opportunity to take responsibility, the first thing he did was put it on somebody else. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want you to take responsibility for you. Listen. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. If you are not saved, I want you to know that there are plenty of people who are here and who are waiting with open arms. And listen, even if you do know Jesus and you say, listen, I just need a booster. I want somebody to call me. This, this live thing is real cool. I really appreciate that. That's really cool. But I would love for somebody to just call me and pray with me. I want you to inbox us, leave us your phone number, and somebody will call you today before the, the, the sun sets. Central Standard Time, someone will call you. We will pray with you. I'm not saying that we're going to be able to counsel you and make you feel better about everything that is happening in your life, but we will pray the prayer of faith to you. And I believe that God is going to do the impossible, that God is going to do something incredible in your life. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God loves you? And if no one has told you that today, I want you to know that God loves you. I want you to know that God is concerned about you. I, th I want you to know that, that God doesn't like to be the heavy in your life. He doesn't want to be blamed for everything that has happened to you. He's done it for you and not to you. And the things that you have done to yourself, God will take those things and turn them and make them good. Make them good for you. God is about to do something awesome. I believe things are going to happen this year. This is going to be, a, I believe that this year is my setup here. I believe that God is restoring the years that the canker worm and the locusts and Negroes and, and folks in bad business deals and all those other things have stolen from me. And if you believe that for yourself, I want you to just simply say, yeah, I believe that God is going to do that for me too. I believe that. And because I believe that I am receiving that. Listen, if you want to be a blessing, let me be very clear. If you are a member of MLC, you should be tithing. If you are not tithing, I remember uh, my dad used to say, gotta put a hole in your pocket. I'm not gonna say all that. But what I am gonna say is that when we tithe, we basically say this piece of what I have does not belong to me. I need to put this to great use. And if I hold on to what is not mine, I am stuck with what is what will be left. There will be no one to blame but you. So if you are a tither, make sure that you are tithing. We have two ways that you can do it. And if you are a member of someone else's church, we don't want your tithe, but you can sow a seed. You can sow. And sowing says a lot. When I go to someone's house, I do not bring paper plates unless I've been asked to bring paper plates for other people to take something home. When I come to someone's house, I bring something that is contributing to the meal. I bring something not just to take something away. I'm not always eating at your table and not bringing a covered dish. I'm not, I'm not bringing a, a, a dessert of some sort. I always want to be a contributing factor. I don't want to always be eating, eating and gorging myself and looking at the cook like, mm, now clean the kitchen by yourself. No, we don't want to do that. We want to sow where we grow. So if you are just passing through and you want to sow, there's two ways that you can do it. You can text the word give and that is G-I-V-E to 214-736-5504. I'm going to leave that on the screen for just a moment. And while that is on the screen, know that you can also give via cash app and that is dollar sign mega life church. I can't believe it. I'm actually working the control panel as well as talking to you today. These are the two ways that you can give. When you do text to give, um, there's always going to be a little banner of some sort that will pop up that will show you 
all of the hows and the ways to give, et cetera, and it will guide you through the process. I am so grateful. Thank you all for praying for me. I tell you, um, I had to speak last week and I was telling everybody uh, that I had lost my notes right before uh, teaching and irony is once again today it was like a last minute uh, uh, couldn't couldn't figure out where you know where my notes were and it's just crazy. But I want to thank all of you for your prayers. Don't you know that I am so grateful, um, Angela? I just saw your comment. Thank you so much um, for praying for me, and, and and I am so proud. If you all uh, do me a favor and follow her, she gives a word of encouragement every single morning. She is very consistent. Um, so please make sure you follow her um, and just encourage her along. If you don't, um, if you don't follow her, then make sure that you do, or she'll make sure that those posts are public so that you can see it. Anyway, I love you all. We will be here again on Thursday night for empowerment. And on Saturdays, we have prayer. And oh my goodness, Prophetess Karen Rippers Johnson and Sisters of Zion has been killing it. It has been an awesome time. And God, I am so grateful for what God is doing and all of the ministries that are represented. Um, we just honor God for you. Hey, Sister Mylita, so good to see you on here. Hello to everybody. I know that this is so informal. Usually we just say good evening, God bless you, and we end it. But I want you to know that this is 2022. I don't. I know that there are new variants coming out. I know that they are talking about war on the horizon and all of those things. But I want you to still believe and say this in the comments. This is still going to be an awesome year for me. I'm telling you, my theme for this year has been my personal theme has been a thousand will fall at my side and 10,000 at my left hand, but none will come nigh my dwelling. I make it intentional to anoint my head with oil. I make it intention to say something good about God and say something good about myself every single day. And I have been seeing the overflow of God moving in my life. And I believe that God. God is going to blow your mind. If you will receive that right now, I want you to hear this. God can still blow your mind this year. If you would put yourself in the secret place, if you can just settle and rest in his presence, I'm telling you, I have been in such a zone of just worshiping God and setting myself up for my tomorrow by what I do in this day when I bless my Jesus when I worship my Lord, I set myself up for a good day. I set myself up for a good month. All right. I'm telling you, I'm excited. All right. Yes. Y'all make that confession. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a great year. I'm praying for your businesses. Let me pray the prayer of faith over your lives. Father, we thank you for their lives. We thank you that their businesses are thriving. We thank you for promotions. We thank you that there is no lack in their lives, but there is only abundance. I thank you that as they open the cabinets, if you're somewhere near your kitchen, open it up now and begin to speak it, that your cabinets will never be empty. If you can run and grab your wallet, open it up and say, my wallet will never be empty. I want you to touch your mind and I want you to say, God gives me creative ideas and witty inventions and they prosper. I want you to begin to look at your feet and say, everywhere my feet goes this year will be blessed. I am blessed because I am a blessing. God has made me so abundant that everywhere I go, I'm able to just sow into people's lives. I'm able to give time because I have more time than I have tasks. I'm able to give money because I've got more money than I have expenses. I am able to give skill and ability. I'm able, don't cost me nothing to tell you how to do something. I am so overflowing in abundance that I'm able to give out of my abundance and I'm thankful. And because I am thankful, I have more to give God thanks for. I have more to give God thanks for. I want you to find pictures, look around and look at your children's pictures say, my children are blessed. I'm leaving a legacy. When I leave out of here, when I leave this world, my children are not going to have debt. I am so grateful that my children will be able to have legacy inheritance. I'm going to leave properties plural for my children. I want you to say that today. When I leave this earth, yes, I'm making some declarations over you today. When I leave this earth, my children will be set up. If they want to work, they can. I will leave businesses for my children. I will leave trust for my children. I will leave stocks 
and bonds. I will leave ideas and patents for my children and trademarks for my children because God has given it to me in 2022. This is the year of overabundance. Somebody is going to leave me an inheritance. I don't know who it is. Some conversation I've had is about to leave me into the good things of my life. Some old lady has said with it, that, that Rachel, that girl that sang to me when I was in a nursing, in a nursing home, I, I want to leave her my entire estate and nobody will be able to contest it. I declare that over your life, that somebody is going to leave something great for you. Put something in your hand that no one will be able to contest That The blessing of the Lord is about to overtake you. Why? Because I see a cloud, ladies and gentlemen, the size of a man's hands. I believe that God's blessing is literally about to run you over. Listen, 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 I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about your health. I'm talking about every time you go for a, a health check, there will be no breast cancers. I declare this over your life that every time you go to work out, you're going to have more endurance. I, I declare that over your life that you're better than you've ever been. 2022 is going to be a setup year for the best days of your life. I declare it. I believe it. I receive it. It is yours today. It's mine. God bless you. I love you. Bye.